Every year, as soon as autumn sneaks up on the wilted steppes of northern Kazakhstan, strange things start happening on the shores of many small lakes long overgrown with reeds and sedge. Despite the cold season, scientists from many different countries start gathering around here, sleepily muttering f-stop formulas and tweaking the settings on their binoculars and camera lenses with their numbed fingers. This is one of the few places in the world where one can observe hundreds of thousands and sometimes more than a million geese on the surface of one small lake. And this, of course, is an incredible sight. But it is not just for record keeping that scientists come here. Many arrive just to enjoy and marvel at this awe-inspiring celebration of life. Such large bird aggregations allow scientists to quickly assess the size of global populations of many rare species of large waterfowl, such as the red-breasted goose and the lesser white-fronted goose. In addition to these two, we also get grey geese, white-fronted geese and tundra bean geese. The data we gather about them here helps to expand our knowledge of these marvelous creatures. After their short rest here in Kazakhstan, the geese will fly to Central Europe, the Black Sea region, to the coasts of the Caspian and Azov Seas, to Central Asia, and to the Middle East. Russian Arctic geese and brantas, who tend to nest to the east of the central and eastern Taimur, split their annual migration into several non-stop flights. For the first leg of their journey, the birds fly up to 2,000 kilometers without stopping, then pause for some rest, often quite long, sometimes up to two months, in order to replenish their energy reserves and prepare for the next long flight to the place where they will spend the rest of the winter. Our geese, the white-fronted, the red-breasted, and the lesser white-fronted geese, which nest in the Yamal and Taimur peninsulas, plus partly in the western Yakutia, migrate as follows. The first leg of their migration takes them to Dvobie, in the territory of the Yamal, Nenets, and Kantimansisk autonomous regions. And then, after a short rest there, they make the next leg of their migration to northern Kazakhstan. Северный Казахстан уникальная территория, потому что 
Northern Kazakhstan is a rather unique territory, because ever since the Soviet times it's been the breadbasket of the entire former Soviet Union. It grows huge quantities of wheat, and the harvest practices used in Northern Kazakhstan are such that after harvesting the fields, which cover territories of enormous sizes, there is a lot of leftover loose grain that for some reason could not be collected. This attracts not only geese, but also cranes, waders, river ducks and many passerine species. Northern Kazakhstan is this huge territory with more than two and a half thousand lakes, where waterfowl spend their nights to rest and drink water, and during the day they fly to the fields in order to feed on all this leftover wheat grain. In Western Europe, the conflict between farmers and the wildlife, in particular geese, is often very acute. Many countries allocate spoilage subsidies, that is, compensate farmers for the harvests lost due to wildlife activity. But this does not happen in Kazakhstan, because geese and other migratory birds arrive there after all harvesting is already completed. Гуси прилетают уже после уборки, как бы самый перелет такой у нас и где поближе к водоему. Geese arrive after harvesting is done and stay close to water reservoirs. They do feed on the fields, but after they are harvested already. I have never seen them land on unharvested plots. It just doesn't happen. Do you grow winter crops here? We don't grow winter crops. Well, yes, Lyosha, everything would be great, but I'm worried about these eagles. Eh, who cares about the eagles? Let them live. No, no, there shouldn't be this many. They won't leave us alone. We've been sitting here for two days and they just won't let it be. Let it be, let it be. They are jerks too. Some come up from below, others from above, more from the flanks. Hard to feel them doing it. I saw 12 eagles sitting on a tiny island in the middle of the lake, and they keep chasing and chasing and chasing them all day long. They only back off after dark, and the geese just end up landing on the steps, poor things. Sonia, there were always eagles here. There have never been so many, not a dozen of them per one tiny island. Eagles, in fact, gather to these lakes from all over the area, and the problem of how to safely protect the endangered species of geese from the equally endangered species of eagles is yet to be resolved. Not that many geese here now. Remember when there used to be a million of them? There used to be a million, that's what I'm saying. Today a local comes up to me, he was there setting fish traps, and says, we used to get 800,000. And I say, yeah, there used to be 800,000. And now, he says, how much is there now? I say, more like 50,000. Oh, so little. And there's a lot less fish too. I say, yeah, yeah. What a character. And he was there with his father, I guess, probably, what, 90 years old, carrying fish traps? They had a red lot of seven. He blocks me with his back and makes these signs to his father, like, hey, hide everything back in the car. I say, hello there. And he's like, hello, are you with the state inspection? And I say, no, not with the inspection. I say, we count birds. He goes, whew. So the old man went right back to it. 
Are we going to release him right here? Well, where else? Watch the neck. Don't worry, I'm gentle. Hey, no biting. Wait, what's with all the biting? All right, pal. Are you good to fly for us? Look at all that biting, huh? Of course they will be biting. Where did you get this goose anyway? Tell us. Where did I get it? Caught it, wounded, then fed it till it got better. How do you get wounded ones here? Well, both hunters and wild birds, like kites. There he goes. That's better. Still a bit weak. But he'll make it up now. Yeah. Sonia, tell us what that is. A wounded one. You caught a wounded one? Well, we were just standing, and I see something's moving, so we go to check it out. Seems not to hurt overall, but won't fly. Wasn't acting too upset neither. Flew into this puddle, well, I mean, ran across, swam in it for a bit, drank some water, walked around and whatnot. Here's a goose for you. Did you close it up? It's all sealed up nicely. He's very bouncy. An active fellow? Very much so. He'll get all the others in your chicken coop straightened out now. Yeah, the one we got yesterday, he bites the others, chases them. I haven't looked for myself, but I'll go check it out now. That's quite a turn of fate for that goose. You found it yourself, caught it yourself, found a spot for it yourself. Hopefully you'll get to release it yourself this Thursday or Friday. Well, let's hope so. Расположение миграционных остановок очень много будет зависеть от э, наполненности и обводненности озер. Идеально для гусей, конечно, так, чтобы... The locations of such migratory rest stops will largely depend on the water level in the lakes. Of course, for the geese it will be ideal if the lake where they drink water and spend the night isn't too far from the fields of harvested wheat. 
If it is up to 40 kilometers or so, then the geese will still fly there to feed, but that's already quite far, as the energy spent to get there for daily forage is no longer compensated by the food they would find there. During droughts, as we have witnessed this year, when many lakes dry up and there are only a few remaining ones still with water, each lake becomes a haven for hundreds of thousands, even up to a million geese each, all across northern Kazakhstan. If the year was good and there is a lot of water everywhere, then the geese are dispersed more evenly throughout the entire territory and do not form such large clusters, which is what happens around springtime too. The best spots for us, of course, are the places such as the ones we visited, where lakes still have water and are surrounded by fields of harvested wheat, and where the hunting and farming grounds are well supervised. Before a license is issued, each person must get acquainted with the rules for visiting the hunting grounds. They are highlighted in the registration journal. Hunting on Tuesdays and Wednesdays is prohibited during the entire season. Yes, this is so the game has time to calm down, because there are many hunters during the season sometimes. Well, there could be only a few of them, but even just one is enough to shoot a bunch and spook everything up. For an amateur single-day license, how many geese are allowed? Five geese, five ducks. Here, I can show you the form. There is a stamp here, not applicable in the game rest zones of sectors A1 and A2. Sectors A1 and A2 are designated safe feeding areas for the red-breasted geese. Is that the map over here? There is a map, yes, with sectors clearly marked. So that nobody can claim they didn't know. Right, you can't claim that. Sectors are clearly marked and the map is accurate and to scale. And this area around the lake itself, that's, that's the game rest zone. How much is that? Sergei says it's 2.5 kilometers? It's one kilometer, actually. Are you getting a license? I am. Well, that's it. They have to read, and we keep this tear-off part. They sign that they know about the endangered species, so if someone breaks any rules, this part of the form stays with us, and this one, and the one for the less affronted geese. 1.2 million tenge. That's from a real court case, and he paid 1,200,000 tenge. Fine amount for a single violation is 200 times minimum monthly wage. Loss of hunting license, confiscation of weapons, does that apply in every case? Yes, as soon as a criminal inquiry is opened, then no weapons, any hunting tools, including things like your camouflage, it's all immediately confiscated. If you use the car to spook up the geese, then you lose the car too. The law is strict. If you shoot multiple protected birds, then up to five years of jail. This works well, right? Well, of course. First of all, many people already know. They probably already read somewhere that there is such a thing as a red-breasted goose, that it mustn't be hunted, that there is even some kind of criminal punishment for it. And here we have the actual criminal law article number printed. And that's usually enough. People quickly understand that it's not a joke. They get it. And you can't just hide what happened or cover it up somehow on these hunting grounds? You can see that it's all very visible around here. You can climb any hill and see where they're shooting, what is falling down and how much. Yeah, you can see everything. Everyone will think twice. First of all, they already know that the red-breasted and lesser white fronted geese are protected species and they can see what they look like in the drawings, so they'll be careful what they shoot. Firing at an identified target is prohibited by the rules too. So, none of that, I couldn't see, I didn't realize. If you can't see what is flying at you, then don't shoot. I know you spend many nights in your car during the hunting season, right? Yes, or at least from 6 in the morning until 11 at night. It takes a while to get around it all every day. So, any car that appears on the horizon, you drive up to it, ask questions and so on? 
Yes. If someone drives out here and shoots a hundred geese, no, that doesn't happen. There is no overhunting. Everything is visible, the neighbors can see, so if there are hunters nearby, it will be quickly reported. Nobody even risks that, because how would you get it all out? It will end up very, very expensive for you. The inspectors can drive up and demand to open the trunk, right? The inspectors know when someone is going out hunting, so they won't drive up. When they're coming back from the hunt, then they drive up, check the license and what kind of game they got. Every hunter knows this because there are many state inspectors here looking after these birds. So you can't just flaunt the laws? No, no. Whether you have no money or lots of money, you'll still pay for it very dearly. The red-breasted geese arrive in Kazakhstan earlier than the white-fronted geese. They tend to migrate along with another rare species, the lesser white-fronted geese. In North Kazakhstan, it is generally well known that the first migratory flocks of geese are mostly rare, endangered species. The hunting season is closed everywhere until the more common white-fronted geese arrive in mass. When the bulk of the white-fronted geese get here, the red-breasted geese and the lesser white-fronted geese get lost in this crowd, so the chances of someone accidentally shooting these birds decrease significantly. In addition, a lot of work was done in Kazakhstan on the proper education of hunters, explaining to them why it is not permitted to hunt during certain periods, because there is simply nothing to hunt. They learn to identify the endangered species. The punishment for illegal hunting is clearly explained to them, and the hunters themselves are not interested in shooting endangered species of birds because when that happens, the hunting grounds will have serious problems too. There are large sums levied on them for all cases of illegal poaching. Similar situations, when endangered migratory species arrive before the bulk of the game that is permitted to hunt, also exists in Russia, for example on the river Ob. Unfortunately, there is no such hunting framework in place in Russia as in Kazakhstan, such that in the places where the endangered species of geese stop, they are never hunted until the massive arrival of the white-fronted geese. This scheme works quite well, and we see that the numbers of the red-breasted geese and the lesser white-fronted geese are perhaps not growing, but at least they have ceased to fall off catastrophically, and the situation has stabilized at the level where we no longer fear that these species will disappear in the coming years. Together, we can save the lakes and steppes, and of course the geese, who are the main feature of this film. We only have to listen to each other and on a cold autumn morning, together, count the migratory flocks over a small lake that is overgrown with reeds. Mm -hmm.